Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a realistic pumpkin cake. It's fall, and as a woman of a certain age, I'm looking to the women around me to see how they celebrate the fall season. So I'm switching things up a little bit. First, forget t-shirts. It's sweater weather. Second, goodbye Taz mug. This is fall, so we're drinking pumpkin spiced lattes out of an oversized mug using both hands. And finally, fall decorations like this decorative pumpkin. Right ladies? I'm going to recreate this decorative pumpkin in cake. But first, shout out to our newest patron, Lee Hewlett. Thank you so much for joining. So let's get started. The first thing to do is carve the bottom layer of cake, starting with a dent in the center. And then I carve the outside edge. This cake is chilled because a chilled cake allows for cleaner cuts. Then I flip the cake layer over and I stack the next two layers of cake. I sculpted the bottom of the pumpkin before stacking the other layers because I just think it's easier. It's hard to carve curved shapes once the cake is already stacked, so I just carved it first and then flipped it over. The top is carved similar to the bottom. I round out the edges and then I carve a dent in the center. The middle layer is confetti because I'm using leftover cakes from customer orders, so they don't match. Now I'm covering the cake in a thin layer of chocolate ganache. Ganache is really, really easy to make. If you ever make a cake at home, either it's homemade or even boxed cake mix, whatever the situation, and you're considering buying store-bought frosting, honestly, don't do it. Make chocolate ganache instead. It's just two ingredients. It's heavy cream and your favorite brand of chocolate. So you just heat up the cream, you pour it over the chocolate, and then you whisk it until it's combined. That's it. It's ridiculously delicious and very easy to make. I rolled out a layer of yellow modeling chocolate and I'm placing it onto the cake and then I'm working it into the shape of a pumpkin. Then I just trim away the excess chocolate. I just pick up the cake and I start working the chocolate around the bottom until the entire cake is covered. I'm able to pick up the cake because it's chilled. So if it were at room temperature, the cake layers would shift a bit and they really wouldn't keep their shape. So you wanna make sure it's chilled. The cake is covered, so now I'm going to shape the pumpkin more, starting with the vertical ribs. With a sculpting tool, I mark where I want each rib and then I press down harder and harder until I like the depth of the mark. I'm using the real pumpkin as a reference, but I don't have to be super exact with replicating it. I love cakes like this. There's such a variety in texture and color in pumpkins that you kind of can't go wrong. Like some pumpkin ribs are deeper than others and some are more shallow, so it's fun to just mess around and see what depth I like best. I guess my point is that it's still going to look like a pumpkin at the end of the day, so even if I get a little carried away with texture, I'm still good. I think I have enough ribs, so now I'm adding some random dents and marks with some crumbled up foil and a stippling sponge. I don't know about you, but I've never been able to find an absolutely perfect pumpkin in all of my life. And I have tried. <laughs> As a kid, I tried so hard to find a perfectly round, even colored clean pumpkin that I could use as my blank canvas for carving it into a perfect jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Eventually my mom would talk me into choosing a pumpkin with some imperfections because the perfect pumpkin just doesn't exist. The cake is sculpted, so now I'm painting in the orange tones. I chose yellow modeling chocolate because yellow is lighter than orange. So painting the orange onto the yellow will be really easy. Painting yellow onto orange, not so much. You always wanna start with the lightest shade. The real pumpkin has fun orange squiggly marks, so I'm painting those in with a thin brush. I'm not being very thoughtful with this so that the marks are nice and random. The orange isn't a perfect pattern, so I just close my eyes and I wiggle my hand around and I let the color and the brush do whatever they want. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My eyes are open, but I do let the brush make marks without putting too much thought into it. 
I'm using a few different shades of orange. I have a light yellow orange, there's a darker reddish orange, and then a medium orange. I also layer these colors over top of each other, creating some depth. I do this until the entire pumpkin is painted in squiggles. The real pumpkin has some gray brown dried dirt on it, so I'm adding my edible version with buttercream. I just brush it on with a paintbrush. Dabbing the buttercream with a stippling sponge gives it a realistic porous texture. I'm outlining the dirt in a couple shades of brown food color just to define it more. That's some delicious dirt. For the stem of the pumpkin, I'm rolling out a modeling chocolate coil. The texture runs vertically down the stem with some deeper marks and some more shallow. I'm feeding a super thin wire into the chocolate stem that'll support the stem so it can stand upright. Then I feed the wire into the top of the center of the cake. Now that it's in the cake, I'm bending the stem to give it a natural curved shape, just like on the real pumpkin. The base of the stem flares out a bit, so I'm using a rounded tool and I'm pressing down onto the chocolate. There we go. Now it looks like it's really attached to the pumpkin. I'm adding a few more extra deep lines on the stem. I love the way that the lines twist with the curve of the stem. It's so pretty. It's a flowy stem. I'm painting the entire thing with brown, adding some lighter areas and then some darker areas. I want that color to seep into all the texture. Now I'm adding a golden brown. I feel like this gold matches the stem of the real pumpkin perfectly. And last, we need some white highlights. And there you have it, a realistic pumpkin cake. The colors are so pretty. My favorite parts of this cake are the twisty stem and the space between the cake board and the bottom of the lumpy pumpkin. You can see there's little gaps under there. Now let's cut the cake. Those are some colorful seeds. <laughs> if you like cakes, subscribe to this channel now because I put out a new cake video every week. And if you like this video, please like this video because it helps us reach more people.